a reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. You have collapsed through your guilt. Take with you words and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all iniquity, and receive what is good, that we may render as offerings the bullocks from our stalls. Assyria will not save us, nor shall we have horses to mount. We shall say no more, our God, to the work of our hands. For in you the orphan finds compassion. I will heal their defection, says the Lord. I will love them freely, for my wrath is turned away from them. I will be like the dew for Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the Lebanon cedar and put forth his shoots. His splendor shall be like the olive tree and his fragrance like the Lebanon cedar. Again, they shall dwell in his shade and raise grain. They shall blossom like the vine, and his fame shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more has he to do with idols? I have humbled him, but I will prosper him. I am like a verdant cypress tree. Because of me you bear fruit. Let him who is wise understand these things. Let him who is prudent know them. Straight are the paths of the Lord. In them the just walk, but sinners stumble in them. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues. And you will be led before governors and kings for my sake as a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but whoever endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Amen, I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. A newly ordained priest was stationed at a very busy parish. And after he settled in for a few months, the pastor there had on his schedule a pilgrimage. He left for about a week. So the newly ordained priest was all by himself at this busy parish. Now, he wanted to get to bed early and wake up early to say his prayers before his day got really busy. But one night, in the middle of the night, he gets a call. He answers the phone, and it's the local hospital. And the woman calling him said, there's a man that was just in a motorcycle accident. He's unconscious but we found a card that said, in an emergency, call a priest. So please come and have the last rites for this man. So quickly, the priest got up, he put on his religious habit, and he went immediately to the hospital. He checked in at the front desk there, and the lady said, this man, he's in ICU. You have to go down a flight of stairs, cross the hall, and the ICU nurse will guide you to his room. So he's rushing, and he finally gets to ICU, and they point him to the room of this man that was in the accident. Now, before he enters the room, he noticed this man's name on the door there, but there was another person's name under that name. In other words, there were two people in that ICU room. He walks into the room and he notices the man right in front of him that he needs to anoint. But he also saw a curtain or a partition to half that room and the other patient was on the other side of the room. So the priest quickly gets his oils or his oil, anointing oil. He gets his stole, and he makes the sign of the cross to start the rite of anointing. Now, as he started the rite of the anointing, the man on the other side said this, you are not a priest. Out of all the things that someone could say in this instance, the man on the other side said that, and he shouldn't have really even known that he was there, knowing that there was a curtain in between them. So the priest probably thought to himself, well, maybe he's in pain, 
maybe he just said something, maybe he's on a, a medication, so forth. So he continued with his anointing. As he continued, the man on the other side said this, what are you doing? He is all mine. Now at that moment, the priest, as he continued the rite of anointing, knew the person on the other side was being influenced by a dem demon or a devil, based on what he just said. And the fact of the matter is, that person on the other side started to curse the priest out. His bed started jumping up and down, and he was trying to distract him by making these loud noises, and the curtain was going up and down. So the priest knew he had to persevere in celebrating the anointing of the sick. Now, if you've ever been anointed or witnessed an anointing, you anoint the forehead of the individual first, and then his palms, ordained priests to get their the backside of their hands anointed since we were anointed at our ordination with our palms here. So the anointing ends with the Trinity on the second hand. While all of this was going on, this man on the other side was cursing him out, saying this, saying that, his bed popping up and down. Eventually when the priest anointed his second hand with the Trinity, after he made the sign of the cross, the man on the other side completely stopped. And a few seconds later, the man who got into an accident, who was unconscious, died. So thanks be to God, the priest was there to be able to celebrate this sacrament before this man died. The fact of the matter is, based on what he saw externally, this man who needed to be anointed at least externally speaking, he had a lot of tattoos, he had a lot of piercings. It would seem like he needed to be anointed. But based on what the person on the other side was saying, certainly that was the case. Could you imagine, by the way, if that priest waited 30 more seconds in bed because it was the middle of the night? That man may have gone to hell for all eternity. Now, God can work outside of the sacraments. But ordinarily speaking, for the forgiveness of sins, when we're talking about mortal sin, we're talking about the sacraments are necessary. In this case, because the man was unconscious, the sacrament of the anointing of the sick forgave his sins. Well, Jesus threw the sacrament. So why do I tell you this, especially in the context of our Mass today? Well, as Catholic Christians, it's not necessarily how we start our Catholic faith that is most important, but how we finish. He who perseveres or endures to the end, we read in the gospel, will be saved. St. Louis Guinella, he says, there is a need to live well, but there is even a greater need to die well. A peaceful death is everything especially today when people value only material things and earthly enjoyments, rejecting eternal values. You know, as a missionary, I, I preach parish missions. That's our primary apostolate as a father of mercy. And a lot of times we preach a mission and people go. They hear us preach. We hear a lot of confessions. At times, I'm in the confessional for what, maybe 30 hours within a four-day span. I have to tr expand the hours of confession because there's a lot of people. But sometimes you may hear that after they get all excited, after they get all hyped up after the mission, they may pray the rosary maybe every day. They may go to daily mass, but after maybe two to three months, you don't see them anymore. So they fall into lukewarmness. They get apathetic. So we have to persevere. We don't want to stop practicing our faith. We want to improve, have an ongoing formation until the day that we die. Our Lord warns us of persecutions. There will be battles. People will hate us because we live out our faith. But will we have the fortitude to be faithful to God? 
Now, it's interesting because in this example that I used at the beginning of the homily, the devil wants people to die unrepentant. The whole point of demons, fallen angels, Satan, he wants people to die in the state of mortal sin. That is his main goal. Now, Jesus tells us in the Gospels that the devil is the father of lies and a murderer from the beginning. The devil is someone who kills souls, who kills the life of grace in souls. At the beginning of our Lord's life, shortly after he's born, we see this example in terms of the devil being a murderer. King Herod, the governor of that region, he is jealous. He is envious of the Son of God and the Son of Mary. So he hires these murderers to kill the child Jesus. We know this. Shortly after our Lord is born, we know that there is the slaughter of the holy innocents. What, three days after Christmas, we celebrate this feast day. So who is the one appointed by God to protect the child Jesus right after he's born? Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph has to flee to a foreign country in the middle of the night. He has to get up, practically take his whole livelihood with his family, the Blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Joseph, and they have to flee to Egypt. I don't know exactly how long of a journey that would be, maybe at least a week. But the worst part about that is to have these murderers, maybe professional assassins, trying to kill them. So was it, is it possible at that time for these murderers to actually try to attack our Lord as a baby and the Blessed Virgin Mary? Absolutely. But who would be the one to defend them? Good Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph could be considered a savior of the savior, Jesus Christ. This is Blessed William Joseph Chaminade. He tells us, to give life to someone is the greatest of all gifts. To save a life is the next. Who gave life to Jesus? It was Mary. Who saved his life? It was Joseph. Ask Saint Paul who persecuted him, Saint Peter who denied him. Ask all the saints who put him to death. But if we ask who saved his life, be silent patriarchs, be silent prophets, be silent apostles, confessors, and martyrs. Let Saint Joseph speak, for this honor is his alone. He alone is the savior of his savior. Now, the reason why I bring up good Saint Joseph, he's my personal patron, because he's the patron of the dying. If we want to persevere to the end, if we want to endure all of what our Lord and his providence allows in this world, it is good to have saints by our side. Obviously, first and foremost, the Blessed Virgin Mary. But right after Our Lady would be Saint Joseph. It's pious tradition, with a small t, that Saint Joseph died in the hands of Jesus and Mary. We know before our Lord's public ministry, at some point, Saint Joseph passed away. We know this because when our Lord was on the cross, one of the last things that he did was he entrusted the Blessed Virgin Mary to Saint John. And we read in the gospel, she entered into his home. Well, obviously, if Saint Joseph was still living, the Blessed Virgin Mary wouldn't need to enter into Saint John's home. So at some point before our Lord's public ministry, Saint Joseph died. So to die in the hands of Jesus and to die in the hands of Mary, Saint Joseph will intercede for us with that special intention. I've joined the pious union of Saint Joseph, I recommend it, where I pray to Saint Joseph at least two times a day so I can have a happy and holy death, that I may persevere in God's grace. O oh, good Saint Joseph, foster father of Jesus, true spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Pray for us and for all who will die this day. Every day I say that prayer. To die in the hands of Jesus, to die with the sacraments. To die in the hands of Mary, if you pray the rosary every day, 
the one prayer that you will probably say most in your life is the Hail Mary. The Hail Mary ends with Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. You know, at times when I'm preaching at places, I tell people, pray that you become a saint. And some people giggle. They laugh. They're like, it's impossible for me to become a saint. They say, Father, I'm actually just aiming for purgatory, they may say. So if you're in this camp, let me give you some advice as we're talking about persevering to the end. Don't try to do the bare minimum in getting to heaven. The devil will have a field day in tempting you in committing a mortal sin. So if anything, you should aim for heaven, that is to become a saint. If you miss, then you'll end up in purgatory. If you aim for purgatory and you miss, I can't help you out after that. And we're talking about eternity here. So we have to practice and live this virtue of what we call magnanimity. That is greatness of soul or having a gigantic spirit. We want to aspire to do great things. We want to seek the highest honor in heaven by being faithful now. So he who perseveres until the end will be saved. Along with magnanimity, we want to pray for fortitude. Perseverance is part of the virtue and the fruit of fortitude. So St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary will help us in that goal. Last but not least, there was a specific saint that talked about getting to heaven, that is becoming a saint. And he was very specific on the best way to do that. He says it's the surest way to get to heaven and also the easiest way. This is Pope St. Pius X, one of the greatest popes within the past, what, 50 to 100 years. He says this, Holy Communion is the shortest and safest way to heaven. There are others, innocents, but that is for little children. Penance but we are afraid of it. Generous endurance of trials of life, but when they come, we weep and ask to be delivered. The surest, easiest, shortest way to heaven is the Eucharist.